in color. The continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Cord. Stephen Cord is convinced that his former client, Lee Weber, stole a gun from Ada Jack's waterfront tavern. And Stephen is determined to find Lee and disarm him. Stephen has long resisted any feeling of continuing responsibility toward Lee, whom he defended in court against the charge of murdering Ann Howard. Lee was released, a decision based largely on Stephen's professional skill. But Stephen's growing feeling that he has let loose a killer is overwhelming him. Ironically, Stephen is on the wrong track. Lee's blind brother, Chris, took the gun. And the more time Stephen spends searching for Lee, the more time Chris has to set a plot in motion. Believe me, Sandy, it's very important, very important that you get out of that house. Lee is not a fool. He wouldn't dare lay a hand on me or you. Not after the close call he had. You think he's just going to forget it, huh? You, you think he's going to forgive you for that help you took from Rodney Harrington? You think he's going to forgive me for testifying against him? Do you really believe that? Either of you seen Lee? No. Mr. Cord. Do you know where he is? No. Now why would you want to know that, Mr. Cord? I just want to talk to him. Oh, you just want to talk to him. Well, why would you want to talk to him, Mr. Cord? Is he in trouble again? No, that's not likely, not likely. If he were in trouble, the police would be here, not you. Oh, I know what it is, Mr. Cord. You've got some good news for Lee. No, that's not likely either, is it? You've already given him the greatest news he could ever get when you got him acquitted. Correction. When the judge failed to hold him over for trial, you've got all the answers and all the questions, haven't you? <laughs> My brother is working, Mr. Cord. He's out there. On a fishing boat. What time's he due back? You never did prove he was innocent, did you, Mr. Cord? You just fouled up the evidence against him, so he got off on a legal technicality. Sandy, what's the name of his boat? I don't know. So you can't be sure, can you? You can't be sure that he didn't kill Ann Howard. If you have any additional evidence, why don't you give it to the district attorney? Otherwise, Chris, why don't you get on with your own life and forget about dead issues? You go all the way, don't you, Mr. Cord? You save his neck in the courtroom, and then you defend his reputation afterwards. So noble and stupid. Chris. But then you have to stick with Lee, don't you, Mr. Cord? Or else it meant you made a mistake. A terrible, deadly mistake. All right, once more. What time's he due back, Sandy? Maybe Lee will get you off the hook, Mr. Cord. Maybe he'll commit another crime, and then you'll know for sure what we all know, that my brother is a killer. But I don't want to interfere, Mr. Cord. Lee's boat will be docking in just one hour. Thanks. You know, there's probably nothing to worry about, but I think you both should know. A gun's been stolen from Ada Jack's tavern. I was right, wasn't I, Mr. Cord? You are still protecting him, aren't you? Just be careful. Chris. Like I said, Sandy, you've got to get out of that house. You've got to get out of that house today. You know something, Matthew? I didn't believe that story you told. No, I didn't. I don't think it was true. And I don't think you were. Come on, we're going to have dinner now. And I'm going to have a steak. Rachel. 
Nice house you're living in, Rachel girl. What's your hurry? Mr. Carson's working in his newspaper office. Mrs. still working in her bookstore. You get time to talk, Rachel? Oh, how's that fellow who's so anxious to protect you? What's his name? Oh, yeah. Rossi, Dr. Rossi. If you don't leave me alone. That, uh, Mr. Carson, he doesn't think much of me. As a matter of fact, he's suspicious, which, uh, wouldn't bother me, except that you're living in his house now. Then I'm staying in his house. And nothing you can do can change it. Now get out of my way. Don't get confused, Rachel. They got you in their house for one reason, to find out about their daughter. So I, uh, I came by to remind you about our little friendly bargain. <laughs> you keep your mouth shut about where you found their daughter's bracelet or uh, Carson's and Dr. Rossi are gonna get hurt <laughs> real bad. Don't cry, Matthew. It's all right. Please don't cry. Yeah, it's a cute little fella. If you ever touch this child, I'll kill you, Jack Chandler. <laughs> now go away. I sure. We get a kick out of your hot temper, Rachel. <laughs> It's a cold one. <laughs> yeah, you old timers keep saying the winters are growing warm, but I don't know. <laughs> what can I do for you, Chandler? You can sell me advanced copy of tomorrow's paper if you got one. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've had a paper to, to read the help wanted ads. You do carry the help wanted ads. Yeah, we have a few. Thank you. Are you looking for a job? I thought I'd try the mill. They've been laying off men since the first of the year. I doubt they'll be hiring. What's the matter? Are you tired of farming? Hmm? Oh, I'd rather be my own boss, but it don't pay the bills. Well, at least you were making a living. Until my wife got sick and the bills started piling up. I still owe the doctor, the druggist, and even some of her funeral. <laughs> you probably could write a check for the whole amount and wouldn't even think anything about it. But to me, it's a lot. Mm, I see. I'm the kind of man who likes to pay his debts. So am I. The only answer I can see is to close up the farm, get a job, at least for the winter. Do you plan to live here in town, Mr. Chandler? Yes, ma'am. I don't see any use driving that distance to go home to an empty place. It only reminds me of what I've lost. Well, what about your sister from Maine? I thought she was supposed to be keeping house for you. I sent her back. No reason for her to stay. Rachel's gone. Mrs. Carson? I want you to know that I'm grateful for what you've done. Chandler. No. The girl didn't want to live with me, and that's the way it is. Chandler, I'm warning you right now to stay away from Rachel. If I ever hear that you've bothered her... You're not going to hear about it, because it's not going to happen. Don't try and talk to her. Don't even go near her. <laughs> she must have painted you some pretty picture of her Uncle Jack. What'd she tell you I'd done? Mr. Carson, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't come here just to buy this paper. If you have any idea of making another try for Rachel's custody... I haven't any legal claim to the girl. I know that. That's why I came here, to tell you that. I'm no sneak. I don't go around hiding in, in corners. With my living and working here in this town, I'm bound to run into you. And I, uh, well, I... I just want you to remember when I do that, that I'm minding my own business and I'm not going to make any trouble. I hope you mean that. 
Ten years, I... I raised little Rachel for my own. I, I watched her grow up. I learned to care for her, not... not as my... my wife's niece, but uh, more like a father. I was a mite strict with her, but... Uh, I only tried to do it for her own good. I want the best for her, Mrs. Carson. Even if it hurts my pride, strangers can make a better home for her than me. I uh, just hope that she someday will want to see me again. Perhaps it will. Thank you for saying that. Oh, Rachel's done all right. She's not only got a mother and a father, she's got a granddad. And even a baby brother. He, how is the young guy? Fine. I've never seen him, but uh, I doubt if there's anyone in the county that uh, didn't read about him when he was born. Rachel's playing nursemaid to a real celebrity. He's just a baby like any other. Ah, uh, come now. You don't really believe that, Mrs. Carson. <laughs> well, see you later. Whatever he was trying to say, I... I'm sure he meant it as a compliment. Sassafras. Well, I'd better get home, then, to get you all in dinner. Yes, yeah, all right, darling. We'll be along in just a few minutes. What do you think about it? Like I said, sassafras and a big dash of slippery elm. All that talk about what's best for Rachel. That was a lot of jawbone. Don't take it too seriously. I think he's trying to throw me off guard, you know. All this business about laying no claim to Rachel. He tried to pull the same thing the first time he came in here, you know. Except from that time, he wanted to convince me that he never saw Allison. Well, you don't know that he ever did meet her? I can't prove it, no. No more than I can prove he's got a record, but I can tell a lie when I hear it. You checked with the police? I know, and they don't have anything on him, I know. You didn't find his name in any of the prison papers? Well, he could have changed that when he got out. Thing is, I've seen him before. Ah, it's like having a sack full of pieces to a jigsaw puzzle. I've got Allison, I've got Rachel, I've got Allison's bracelet, and I've got the fact that I can... I can remember Chandler's face from somewhere. Thing is, I'm missing all the pieces that'll make the whole picture for me. Maybe you'll never find them. Well, uh, maybe. You have a son and a wife to consider. You can't make them miserable hounding after Chandler. Well, what do you expect me to do, anyway? Ignore the fact that he's moving into town? Are you concerned about Rachel? Of course I'm concerned. For her sake, for the girl herself, or only for what she can help you find out about Allison? Mm -hmm. 